The world was blue. No horizon. No distinguishable shape or landmass. Just an endless expanse of blue in every direction. The sky bled into the ocean. A near-perfect mirror of each other. And for a brief moment, Kale felt as if he were floating in an eternity of water and air. His head throbbed. Every heartbeat sent a fresh wave of pain behind his eyes. He winced as he tried to sit up, his body stiff and aching from lying too long in an unnatural position. The hard metal floor of the lifeboat pressed against his back, unfamiliar yet oddly comforting in its cold embrace. Kale blinked rapidly, his vision clearing. The last thing he remembered was the accident on the horizon, the exploratory ship that had been his home for the last eight months. A sudden mechanical failure in the engine room, followed by chaos. Shouts. Explosions. Smoke billowing through the corridors. He had scrambled for the lifeboats, barely making it into one before the entire ship rocked violently. Then, darkness. Now he was here, drifting aimlessly in the vast ocean, far from where he was supposed to be. He glanced around the lifeboat. His emergency supplies were still intact, water, food, flares, but his communication device was fried. A scorch mark ran along the side of the console, sparking intermittently. He was stranded with no way to call for help. With a groan, Kale stood and peered over the edge of the lifeboat. The water was eerily still. Too still. It was unnatural for an ocean, even this far from land. The air itself felt heavy, like it was laden with something unseen, something waiting just below the surface. Suddenly, the stillness was shattered by a loud roar. Kale spun around, heart racing. He could see it now. Distant shapes on the horizon, rising and falling with the rhythm of the waves. No, not just waves. Ships. Dozens of them. Kale squinted, trying to make sense of the scene. His stomach tightened as the ships drew closer. These weren't ordinary human vessels. The designs were sleek, organic, almost like living creatures crafted into seafaring war machines. Bright lights blinked along their hulls, and strange spires rose from their decks, pulsating with a faint blue glow. And then there were the others, smaller, faster craft darting between the ships, weaving through the water with a grace that seemed impossible for any machine. As they moved closer, Kale's eyes widened. They weren't machines at all. They were alive. The creatures were humanoid in shape but distinctly alien. Their skin was iridescent, shimmering in shades of green and blue, like the scales of fish. Their limbs were elongated, almost fluid in motion, and they seemed to swim through the water as effortlessly as one might walk on land. They wielded strange weapons, long spear-like devices that shot bursts of energy through the air, leaving sizzling trails of steam wherever they struck the water. A sea battle between humans and these waterborne aliens. Kale's heart pounded in his chest. He had heard rumors, of course, tales of the Deep Ones, an ancient race that lived beneath the waves, unknown and untouched by humanity for millennia. But no one had ever confirmed their existence. It was just a myth, a story told to entertain children. Yet here they were, locked in combat with human forces. His lifeboat was drifting closer to the battle. Too close. He could see human ships now. Familiar vessels, though battered and bruised from the fight. The roar of cannons filled the air, and explosions erupted across the water. Waves rocked his tiny boat as more blasts sent geysers of seawater high into the sky. Kale frantically searched the boat for anything that could help. A weapon, a way to steer, anything. But the lifeboat was simple, designed for emergencies, not for navigating through a war zone. He was defenseless. Another explosion rang out, this one closer. Kale ducked instinctively as a piece of debris from a nearby ship splashed into the water beside him. He could feel the heat of the battle, smell the acrid smoke that hung in the air. He had to get out of here. But just as he reached for the emergency or something else caught his eye, a massive shape moving beneath the surface of the water. It was enormous larger than any submarine or sea creature Kale had ever seen. For a moment, he thought it might be one of the Deep One's ships, but as it drew closer, he realized with horror that it was alive. The creature was serpentine, its body covered in thick, armored scales that shimmered with a faint bioluminescence. 
Its head, sleek and angular, rose from the water, and its eyes, deep, piercing yellow, fixed on him. Kale froze, heart hammering in his chest. The creature stared at him for what felt like an eternity, its massive form rising and falling with the waves. Then, with a low, guttural growl, it lunged. Kale barely had time to react. He threw himself to the side, just as the creature's head crashed into the lifeboat, sending it spinning through the water. He was thrown from the boat, plunged into the cold, dark depths of the ocean. The water was shockingly cold, sapping the air from his lungs. Kale struggled to orient himself, kicking his legs as hard as he could. His body ached, and his lungs burned for oxygen, but he couldn't tell which way was up. Then something grabbed him. He felt a powerful force wrap around his waist, dragging him upward. His vision blurred as he broke the surface, gasping for air. He looked up to see one of the alien creatures, one of the deep ones, holding him aloft, its shimmering eyes locked on his. It spoke, though not with words. The voice echoed inside his mind, a deep, resonant tone that felt like the ocean itself. Why do you fight? Kale's heart raced. He struggled to form a response. His thoughts jumbled, but the creature's grip on him tightened. Your kind invades our waters. We defend. I, I didn't. Kale stammered, choking on seawater. I'm not a soldier. I was an explorer, a researcher. My ship, there was an accident. I'm just trying to survive. The creature tilted its head, its eyes narrowing as it studied him. Survival, it said, the word reverberating in Kale's skull. That is all we seek. Yet your kind brings death. Kale shook his head, trying to clear his thoughts. I don't know why we're fighting. This wasn't supposed to happen. We didn't know you existed. The creature stared at him for a long moment, its mind probing his thoughts. Kale felt a strange sensation wash over him, like the creature was sifting through his memories, searching for truth. Then it released him. Kale fell back into the water, gasping as he resurfaced. He looked up, half expecting the creature to strike again, but it had turned its attention back to the battle. The human ships were gaining ground, their weapons tearing through the Deep One's forces with brutal efficiency. The alien ships, once sleek and agile, were now riddled with holes, their glowing lights flickering like dying embers. Kale watched in stunned silence as the tide of battle shifted. The humans were winning, but at what cost? Another explosion rocked the water, and Kale's lifeboat, what remained of it, was swept away by the waves. He had nothing now. No ship, no way to escape. He was caught between two forces, both bent on destruction. As the battle raged around him, Kale felt a deep, gnawing sense of futility. This wasn't his fight. He didn't belong here, but there was no escaping it now. Suddenly, a shadow fell over him. Kale looked up, his heart skipping a beat. One of the human ships, a massive destroyer, was bearing down on him. His cannons fired relentlessly, sending shockwaves through the water. He could see the crew on deck, shouting orders, oblivious to his presence. Kale tried to swim, but it was too late. The ship was moving too fast. He braced himself for impact, knowing there was no way he could survive. But then, something incredible happened. The water surged around him, and the Deep One's massive creature, the serpentine beast, rose from the depths once more. It wrapped its body around Kale, shielding him from the oncoming ship. The destroyer crashed into the creature's armored scales, its hull buckling under the force. Kale watched in awe as the beast roared, its voice a deafening chorus that shook the air and water alike. The human ship reeled back, damaged but still afloat, and the creature turned its gaze to Kale once more. You are not like them, the voice said in his mind. You seek no war. Kale swallowed hard, nodding slowly. No, I don't. The creature's eyes glowed brighter for a moment, then dimmed. It released him, its massive form slipping back beneath the waves. As it vanished into the deep, the remaining deep ones followed, retreating from the battle. Kale floated there, exhausted, watching as the human ships ceased their fire. The battle was over, but the ocean was still littered with the wreckage of both sides. 
the war, was done, but the aftermath remained, scattered like driftwood on a stormy shore. The silence that followed was haunting, broken only by the distant crackling of burning wreckage and the groan of metal on metal as damaged ships struggled to stay afloat. Kale's body felt leaden, the cold of the water seeping deep into his bones. He stared into the horizon where the alien forces had vanished, his mind still reeling from the encounter. These beings, the Deep Ones, weren't just mindless aggressors. They had their own story, their own desire to survive. And humanity had stumbled into their world, bringing war. Kale floated on his back, gazing up at the sky. The human ships were regrouping, no doubt tending to their wounded and assessing the damage. They hadn't seen him, or perhaps, in the chaos of the battle, they had simply written him off as lost. It didn't matter. What mattered now was what came next. The humans had won at least this battle. But it was clear to Kale that the conflict was far from over. The Deep Ones had retreated, not because they were defeated, but because they had no reason to continue the fight. Not yet. The beast's final words echoed in Kale's mind. You seek no war. He hadn't come to this ocean for conquest or destruction. He had come to explore, to understand, and now he had a story that needed to be told. He kicked his legs, pulling himself back toward the remnants of his lifeboat. The hull was cracked and half-submerged, but it was still floating. He clambered aboard, drenched and shivering. His mind raced, formulating what he would do next. The comms were dead, but if he could get close enough to one of the human ships, he might be able to signal them for help. But even as he thought this, something inside him hesitated. Would they even listen? Would they care? He didn't have time to dwell on the question. A shadow passed over him and Kale looked up to see a smaller craft approaching, one of the human patrol boats sent to sweep the battlefield for survivors. He stood shakily, waving his arms, and the craft turned toward him, its engines humming softly as it cut through the water. As the boat pulled alongside his wrecked lifeboat, two crew members reached out, pulling Kale aboard. They wore standard-issue naval uniforms, faces smudged with soot and sweat from the battle. Where the hell did you come from? One of them asked, wide-eyed. We thought everyone was gone from that sector. Kale coughed, struggling to find his voice. I was on the horizon. There was an accident. I I've been drifting. The crew exchanged a glance, then nodded. You're lucky we found you. A lot of people didn't make it out of that mess. Kale's stomach churned. He had seen the destruction firsthand, and now the weight of those lost lives pressed heavily on his chest. What about the aliens? He asked cautiously. The deep ones. The crewman's expression darkened. They're gone for now. We hit them hard. Drove them back under the waves. Command's already planning the next phase. Next phase. Kale frowned. You're... continuing the attack? Of course the crewman said, as if it were the most obvious thing in the world. We've got orders to secure these waters. Whatever they are, they're a threat. We can't just leave them alone down there, plotting who knows what. Kale felt a surge of frustration. He wanted to scream, to tell them that they were making a mistake. That these creatures weren't mindless invaders, but living beings defending their territory. But how could he explain? Would they even believe him if he tried? The patrol boat turned toward the horizon, where the human fleet was regrouping. Kale sat silently, his mind churning. He had seen enough of war in those brief moments, and he had seen what the Deep Ones were capable of. There was no doubt that humanity had stumbled into something far bigger than they understood. But it wasn't too late. There had to be a way to avoid total destruction. As the boat neared the fleet, Kale made his decision. He had to speak to someone. Someone in command, someone who might listen. He couldn't let this become another senseless conflict. If there was a way to broker peace, to stop the war before it escalated further, he had to try. The boat docked and Kale was led aboard one of the larger human warships. The crew was still busy with post-battle recovery, but he was escorted to a makeshift infirmary, where a medic tended to his bruises and cuts. He waited, tense, knowing that his opportunity was coming. Eventually, an officer arrived, a woman in her forties, wearing a crisp uniform, 
her face lined with the stress of command. You're Kale Reed, right? She asked, her voice businesslike. Yes, ma'am, Kale replied, sitting up straighter. I'm an exploratory researcher. My ship was destroyed. And I... I know who you are, the officer interrupted. What I want to know is what you were doing in the middle of a war zone. Kale took a deep breath, steadying himself. I was stranded, but that's not the point. I saw what happened out there. I saw the deep ones. They're not just mindless attackers. They're defending themselves. I think there's a way to stop this without more bloodshed. The officer's eyes narrowed, her expression unreadable. And what makes you think that? Kale hesitated for a moment, then plunged forward. One of them saved my life. They spoke to me not with words, but in my mind. They're intelligent and they don't want war any more than we do. But if we keep attacking them, they'll have no choice but to retaliate. The room was silent for a moment. The officer studied him, her eyes cold and calculating. You're asking me to believe that these creatures, these aliens, communicated with you telepathically? She asked, her tone skeptical. Yes, Kale said firmly. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm telling the truth. If we keep pushing them, we'll provoke something far worse than what we saw today. We need to find another way. The officer crossed her arms, considering his words. Then, with a sigh, she shook her head. I'll take your report to command, but you should know, they're not likely to listen. We've lost too many people already. The orders are to eliminate the threat, and that's what we're going to do. Kale's heart sank. He could see the truth in her eyes. This was a war machine now, and once set in motion, it wouldn't stop easily. But he wasn't giving up. Not yet. I need to speak to someone higher up, he insisted. Someone who can make decisions. If we don't stop this now, we're going to lose more than just ships. We're going to lose everything. The officer stared at him for a long moment, then finally nodded. I'll see what I can do, but don't get your hopes up. Kale watched as she left the room, his mind racing. He didn't know how much time they had, but he knew one thing for certain. The war between humans and the Deep Ones wasn't over. But maybe, just maybe, there was still a chance to save them all from the Deep Waters and from themselves. As Kale gazed out through the porthole at the ocean, where the remnants of the battle still floated, he silently made a vow. He would find a way to make them listen, before the tide turned once again.